Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're here for my one week postpartum update. So let's hop on into how I've been feeling. So for those of you who have not yet seen my birth vlog, I will leave that link down below for you guys. So Riker was born on Saturday, February 9th at 10.40 p.m. and he was quite the stubborn little guy, born at 42 weeks and um, took me about all day to get to a five and by the time I got to a five at 9.35 p.m. he was born by 10.40. So once we got a good swift kick in his butt, he decided he was gonna come really quick. I'm gonna show you guys him really quick before I put him back in his little lounger. Oh, he's just the sweetest little guy. This a baby. Say hello world. I'm a sleepy boy. I'm a sleepy boy. Look at that face. Oh, I just wanna squish him. Isn't he just the cutest little bean? Oh, I could just squeeze him. Okay, you guys, so I'm gonna break this video up into um, a few different sections and I wanna get a couple things out of the way right away, just a couple like short topics that I do plan to dive in deeper with in two separate videos. First being um, breastfeeding. So I am breastfeeding Riker and it's been going really well, you guys. He is such a little boob muncher, that's what we call him because he's constantly eating. I would say sometimes it's every 40, 45 minutes. Sometimes it is every two hours if he's getting a good nap in like he is right now. So I will be breaking down um, a good breastfeeding video for you guys. I saw there was a lot of interest in the Haka breast pump and that will be included in that as well. Um, and then once I start to pump, that will be a separate video. So don't worry guys, I've got lots of good like breastfeeding and pumping videos. God willing that my breast milk stays good and supplied this time, um, I will have lots of breastfeeding series videos coming up for you guys. Now another little um, side topic that I wanted to touch on really quickly is my baby schedule. So I do have a very, um, it's like specific but it's kind of loose um, on the schedule for baby Riker. Um, what I did with Kaya and now what I'm doing with Riker, it's super simple. Essentially all I do is during the day I just make sure that they're having more awake time. So I'm waking him up maybe a little bit more than I would say at night. At night time I tend to just feed him and change him, put him back in his swaddle, lay him back down in his bassinet. Um, there's no like talking to him, there's no lights on, it's all very quiet. That I'm pretty strict on for um, nighttime routine and then for daytime routine, like I said, I will just keep him awake longer and then make sure that he's being fed every two hours, every hour and a half maybe, just to help him set his circadian rhythm. Now what that is, for those of you who aren't familiar with the terminology, is that it's just helping your baby understand day from night. I had great success with this with Kaya and it has been slowly but surely working with little man. I will again have a video that dives deeper into the details as to how I really get him on a good schedule. So make sure that you guys are on the lookout for those videos in the upcoming weeks. The downstairs, if you will, has actually been pretty good. I didn't need any stitches, which is a huge blessing, but I technically did tear um, just the teeniest, tiniest little bit on my urethra, but my doctor didn't have to repair it at all, so he left me as intact on my medical record. Um, something that I think that was overseen a little bit is I did get the tiniest little um, fissure um, down there, <laughs> and it's been really uncomfortable for me. I haven't had any like hemorrhoidal problems or anything like that, but this like little tiny tear, this fissure, is uncomfortable enough to where like standing for too long or sitting for too long can be uncomfortable. So I have to balance my like sitting to standing ratio pretty well just to make sure that I'm comfortable. I have been taking some ibuprofen just to make sure that I'm comfortable down there. But besides that, everything is, this is like a little TMI, but I look down there, but everything looks like really good. So I did take a look down there and everything honestly looks really good considering that I just had a baby. I am happy with the results. How's that? I do have a pile of goodies sitting here that I'm going to dive into for you guys right now and that is all in relation to the downstairs area. Now these are the, just the products that I found to be the most helpful 
and again I did touch base on this in my postpartum essentials video I just wanted to go over with you now that I'm actually using the products I wanted to show you um, which ones I've been turning to the most so the padsicles I did overdo it on the padsicles again this time I have a whole bag left that I haven't even touched at all um, I used a couple of them in the first I would say after the first three days so like three four and five days um, postpartum I did use a few of them just because it was feeling really sore down there um, my pubic bones really been bothering me you guys when I use the padsicles it helps to almost ice my pubic bone so that's really been the biggest issue that's been the biggest reason why I've used the padsicles slowly but surely my pubic bone is feeling better I remember it taking about six months before I was like fully comfortable in the pubic bone area with Kaya I fully expected to take that much time this time as well but again those popsicles really helped that and I think eventually just like maybe using an ice pack um, on that area would really help as well okay so I'm gonna show you guys just really quick those postpartum items that I've been using for down there for the first day you wear that giant diaper pad it's like not super comfortable but it does the job and it's not that bad um, and then of course you're wearing the beautiful mesh panties which you guys I wore all they gave me like five pairs of mesh panties in my like motherhood postpartum bag um and i used all of them all of them in the first week i love those things i know some people don't really like them but i love them they're not cute but i love them so this is what's gonna go in your super beautiful mesh panty um this is what i like to call the um adult diaper <laughs> so it's not like an all-around diaper it's like a giant pad and again I use this for the first day my bleeding hasn't really been a lot and it wasn't a lot with Kaya either so anyways yeah giant freaking diaper I used this only for the first day and this again came from the hospital okay so let's get into something um, a little less terrifying and this is the pads that I used probably for the first I would say four days at home um, so like till seven days postpartum so exactly a week um, this is what I was using for the most part these are those overnight pads um, they are let's see if I can open this up these are the same ones that I used for my um, padsicles and this is just the always brand these are the ones that I used for the most part even though I wasn't having a ton of bleeding I just found that I felt more comfortable in these um, so yeah now moving on to the real cute ones this is what I've been using from um, seven days on and I probably will use this until I'm done bleeding which right now at the rate that I'm bleeding I would say I'm probably gonna be done by around week two so I've been using these cute always um, just like panty liners really is all that they are they come in scented and non scented and they come in like a bunch of cute little different prints and yeah I just like them this is what I've been using on the daily since about seven days postpartum all right so every single time that i go to the bathroom i have a process what that process is is i will use a peri bottle now i just have water in here um, to give you guys a good idea of what you do with this so you're going to use this just to kind of spray yourself off as you're going to the bathroom and afterwards just to keep it nice and clean down there after you use the peri bottle you will kind of dab dry down there because you don't want to be wiping necessarily um, especially if you have a ton of stitches you guys you definitely don't want to be wiping you just want to dab and then what I typically will do next is I will pull out my pad so or my panty liner I will create myself a little pad Sunday every single time TMI and I can't believe I'm sharing this on the internet I really hope that this helps somebody out there but my recovery has been incredible and I I give a lot of credit to this process that I use so again panty liner down after you dab dry then what I like to do is I like to go in with my dermaplast even if I'm not feeling super sore I will still use this just to make sure if there's any like itching or burning pain that this is gonna cover it another product that I have been loving which I will layer on after I'm done with the dermaplast is the herbal perennial spray by earth mama this is mostly just witch hazel with like some extra stuff in it but this is super helpful for down there and is kind of a little bit cooling so it's very soothing love this stuff and it smells pretty good too 
And then the final step is I will take my Tux pads. Now this is just the Target brand, the up and up version of Tux pads. And I will take three of them. I will lay them on my panty liner. There's a nice little like cooling layer, if you will, on top of my panty liner. And it's really nice. It's been really soothing. Okay, so as of yesterday, I stopped using like all the sprays and stuff because I really wasn't like burning down there anymore. Um, and I started to use more of this perennial balm. So once you're coming off of those sprays and you don't feel like you need those sprays anymore, I would transition to this. And um, it's self-explanatory. I'm not really going to get into it too much, but this is the product that I reach for now that I'm just about done with those sprays. Okay, so moving into the rest of my postpartum recovery, which is just so glamorous and wonderful. To keep up with my milk supply, I will include this in my breastfeeding video, but I have it with me, so I'm just going to kind of touch base on it really quick, is I've been having like an almond milk tea every single day with this lactation tea, which is by Pink Stork. I recommended their labor and delivery tea, um, which was the red raspberry leaf tea. I drink that every single day. I probably have like three or four cups a day, you guys, from, let's see, from about 35 weeks on. I had three or four cups a day of their labor and delivery tea, which I said I would tell you guys if I feel like if I felt like it made a difference and do I feel like it made a difference? Probably. I did make it to a four this time without needing an epidural and I really didn't feel like I needed it but it was because my last labor I went from a five to Kaya being out within an hour and a half and of course this labor was very, very true to form to last time. Um, so my nurse and my doctor were just being precautionary and they wanted me to get the epidural when I was at a four so that they could break my water, get things going, and it wouldn't be too late for an epidural. So um, I made it to a four and I feel like I was still pretty comfortable. So the labor and delivery tea, yes, I do feel like it really made my uterus stronger and I was able to handle a lot more pain this time too. But that is just my personal opinion on it. I love red raspberry leaf tea and I love evening primrose oil, which again, I feel like that is exactly why I didn't tear again this time, two times in a row. I have about an eight pound baby this time, uh, again on the conundrum with his weight, we'll find out more tomorrow. So I delivered an eight pound baby, a nine pound baby, and with my nine, nine pound baby, I only had two stitches. And now with my eight pound baby, I didn't tear at all. And I attribute a lot of it to the fact that I was using the red raspberry leaf tea for the inside and making my, my uterus stronger and for the evening primrose oil that I was taking orally and vaginally. Those were just like, those were just working miracles and I highly recommend it. So anyways, okay, back to my tea. So this is the lactation tea that I will put into my almond milk that I heat up every single day. And I do feel like this has made a big difference in my milk supply. Um, I feel like I have plenty. I do feel like I have a little bit of an oversupply. So I have like kicked it down a little bit on this lactation tea just in case. But regardless, it tastes really good in almond milk and um, I will continue to use this. The next topic that I want to bring up in this video is the afterbirth contractions. I didn't experience this with Kaya. Um, I just had some cramping, but this time I will say that the contractions after having Riker were worse than the contractions I had when I was having him, when I was in labor with him. They were so painful for the first week that I honestly stayed laying down for most of the time. It was really hard for me to get up and do anything. So with my contractions, I really, I was super grateful that my husband Mike was able to stay home with me for the first three days when I was at home because you guys, I was absolutely useless. We came home on Monday or Tuesday and I had him stay until Thursday. And in fact, he stayed a little bit on Friday, which I'll touch base on in a second. Um, but he stayed through Thursday because I was in so much pain. I could not move every time I would nurse him. Um, and every time I would do too much or I would walk around too much, these contractions would start to kick up and they were intense. So to combat those really intense contractions, again, I stayed on top of my ibuprofen. And then I also had this recovery tea that my mom got me as a gift for my push gift. Um, this has really been helping me, you guys. And I prefer this um, over the tincture that I got. I also got this tincture on Amazon and I seriously think it tastes like a really 
bad mixed whiskey drink. I don't know why. Mixed with like a garden. It doesn't taste good to me at all. Yes, I do think it probably helped a little bit, but I just wanted to vomit every single time that I took this. In fact, I did vomit um, one time after taking this, and I don't know if it was because of this or if it was because of something that I ate, um, which is why my husband had to stay for a little bit of Friday morning is because I was up all night Thursday night after coming home. So a few days after coming home from the hospital, um, I was up all night and I was throwing up. It was just not a good situation. I was in really tough shape and it wasn't the stomach flu because we had just had the stomach flu like six weeks before that over Christmas. Two years in a row that that has happened to us, which is absolutely awful, but it wasn't the stomach flu. Nobody else in the house got sick. It was just me and I really feel like it was something that I ate, but I did take this right before I threw up. So anyways, I'm sure that a lot of people have had good luck with this stuff, um, the After Ease for Pregnancy by Wish Garden, but I just, oh, I can't do it, can't do it. <laughs> All right, the only other thing that I have been doing for postpartum is I've been focusing a little bit on my weight loss. Now I do make sure that I have at least 2,000 to 2,500 calories a day so that I am producing enough milk for this little guy. So I just wanted to make sure that I'm putting really good nutritious food in my body so that I'm producing really good nutritious milk for him. I have had like a couple of cheats. As you guys will see in my next video, um, which is a grocery haul for like breastfeeding food and breastfeeding snacks, there's like a couple of treats in there that I splurge on. But anyways, it's been going really well. I have lost almost 40 pounds since having him. I'm almost completely back being back at my pre-pregnancy weight. I'm super excited. I gained about 43 pounds. Um, that was the day, the morning of that I had him. I had officially gained 43 pounds and I'm sure that I gained more weight when I was in the hospital from IV fluids because I just puffed up. But I came home and right when I got home, I was like 25 pounds less and now at 10 days postpartum, I am almost completely back to my pre-pregnancy weight and I'm really excited about it. It's just the weight is melting off this time. It's a completely different experience versus my first time, which I really struggled to get that baby weight off, but I did gain about 100 pounds with my daughter. <laughs> so anyways, it's been really exciting. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit what I've been doing for my postpartum weight loss. And I'm really excited to kick off that series for you as well because I do have some extra weight that I want to shed and I want to share how I do that with you guys because I'm super passionate about weight loss. It's just something I've always struggled with. I'm just like always struggling with it. I feel like all women struggle with what they put in their bodies. So anyways, and just something fun that I want to share with you guys. But for the weight loss this time, breastfeeding really honestly I feel like has been the number one thing to help me. Okay, now I've got Kaya laying under the blankets. For my postpartum weight loss, just real quick, I wanted to tell you guys that breastfeeding has been number one this time for my weight loss, which last time it really hindered my weight loss. So I have experienced it both ways. The other thing that I have been doing to help with my postpartum weight loss is I have been drinking a ton of water and I've been trying to cut out my gluten. Eventually I will be cutting out dairy as well, just because I know <laughs> dairy isn't super great for me, but guys, the cheese addiction is real. So we struggle a little bit with that. The last thing that I wanted to touch on for you guys is that baby boy is doing super well. So again guys, this is little baby Riker. He's doing super well, 10 days postpartum. He's just a perfect little nugget and He's taking a really good morning nap right now. The situation behind me, my bed, this is how it is. Kaya's in and out of my bed all the time. I've got the bassinet next to me, his newborn boppy lounger behind me, and then his boppy pillow somewhere back there as well. These are all things that I use on the daily, which I will be posting a newborn essentials video. So you'll get a really good idea of the products that I have used religiously. I have just been on cloud nine, you guys. He's so perfect. I love him so much and his squishy little face. I could just kiss him and hug him forever. All right, you guys, well, that is going to wrap up my one week postpartum update, one week baby update. If you guys have not yet subscribed to my channel, I would love if you joined my little family here on YouTube. I do lots of mama content these days because as you can see, I just have the cutest little baby boy and I am loving this newborn stage. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this kind of video on my channel. I will see you guys on Tuesday for the grocery haul. Okay, bye guys.
All right, you guys, this is my belly. One week postpartum. As you can see, I've got like extra pooch skin right here. This like always stays, this never really goes away. But yeah, not too shabby for 10 days postpartum. lady status um they come in like scents and nonsense that was funny <laughs> it looked like a, a normal business down there so uh